Jack gave you his word he would protect your headspace. Yet he leaves you to your mental devices. You trying to alienate me from Jack Crawford? The crazies just keep on coming. This week's Hannibal brought along a very vicious killer of the week, and the emotions ran high in the Crawford family. It's amazing how a TV series is able to get away with so much grisly content. By its nature, Hannibal was always going to be a violent show. It is based off a serial killer after all. But the writers are taking the show to new creative heights with the grotesque and disgusting crime scenes we've seen. And so far, this week could be the most daring of all as the Angel Maker. A man whom is dying and doesn't have much time left is, in his mind, elevating his victims and doing God's work. After choosing his targets, this man would skin the flesh off his victims' backs, string their bodies and wings up with fishing lines, then go to sleep with them watching over him. It's a violent sight and will even express concern to Jack over his current mindset. He snapped at him, which to be frank, if Lawrence Fishburne shouted at me like that, I'd have probably followed Will's route in apologising and getting the hell out of there. The guy is a frigging titan, but lo and behold, Jack was right, as Will again did end up tracking this killer down. Admirably, we took quite a swerve away from the outcome that we would have expected. There was no confrontation with Boodish, he took his own life in the same manner that he did all the others. Couldn't explain how on earth he was able to string himself up like that, but in Hannibal there is a sense of a heightened reality. I mean, he would have struggled to get that fake cop up in the alleyway like that, let alone himself, as we learned that he was actually targeting criminals as a sort of vigilante, I guess. And we had that freaky little interaction at the end, as Will imagined Boodish coming down from his hooks in attempt to do the same to him. Here, it was all in his mind, and we've spoken before about how fragile his mind was getting, but now with him sleepwalking all around Wolf Trap, Virginia, he is getting dangerously close to falling over the edge. It was an emotional episode for Jack this week. We were introduced to his wife Bella briefly at the end of last week's episode, where at first look she was quite cold and very distant with him. We dove a lot further into the detail, however, as we sadly learnt that Bella had lung cancer and didn't want it to affect her life. Jack was devastated in learning the news, which he discovered when talking to Boodish's wife. She explained similar symptoms and actions which matched exactly to what Bella was doing. Lawrence Fishburne really is fantastic, and I felt for him massively at learning of his wife's diagnosis. And it got even more heartbreaking when Jack went to talk to her in Hannibal's office. The pair aired their feelings as Jack told his wife that he would stand by her and that he would always be there. As we signed off the episode with a touching moment as Will told Jack that he would sit with him until he was ready to talk. Hannibal actually tried to alienate him away from Jack earlier in the episode. Will realised it on the spot and immediately began to question Hannibal's intentions. But when all was said and done, and despite his current feelings, Will's good nature prevailed and was there for Jack in his time of need. I didn't count on changing as much as I did. My overall verdict for this week's episode of Hannibal is a strong 8 out of 10. Wonderful performances built the spine of this week's episode. Gina Torres and Lawrence Fishburne were both easily the two standouts, and the killer of the week to me was much more interesting than that of last week's, as he provided us with some of the most disgusting kills to date. Brian and his writers must have a field day in creating these scenes. We've seen gory thus far, but this week really reaches for an all other level. The detail is stunningly grotesque and makes for a scene that you will not forget in a short space of time. I just find it amusing how a body flailed and displayed as it is, is absolutely fine, where a butt crack is like, damn no you can't have that, edit that shit out or cover it up somehow. Well, Hannibal's answer is to just throw more blood on it. Not kidding, I'm pretty sure I remember Brian Fuller referencing something similar a few years ago. I know it's all TV guidelines and that, but to me, after a certain time, 10pm or whatever, 
anything should be allowed if it needs to be. It shouldn't have to be on HBO or stars to have profanity, etc. But hey, that's network TV for you. Anyway, Hannibal and Will's interactions were once again my highlight of the week. Hannibal actually dared to smell Will and he brushed it off after he was caught as bad aftershave. His efforts are increasing to keep Will under his wing of influence. But try as he might, he does not have control yet. He tried to push him away from Jack this week and failed in the end with Will's good nature shining through. But don't bet against Hannibal pushing that button again. Because if that's what he wants, you can guarantee he will try his darndest to make it happen. Abigail and Alana were absent from this week as Hannibal finally got around to meeting Bella. And he got a lot more than he bargained for as it looks like now she has officially become his latest patient. He's grasping at the big picture, getting a clear image of everyone's lives around him. So Hannibal has to be careful. He risks his secret being exposed if he lets too many people get close to him. Granted, with no reason to doubt his plans, he's kept himself in the shadows up until now, and is a master of his craft with no motive. So why would anyone doubt him? And that is why Hannibal Lecter is the devil hiding in plain sight. So what did you guys think about this week's episode of Hannibal? And which crime scene do you think is the most gory yet? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. Did you just smell me? Difficult to avoid. <laughs> I really must introduce you to a finer aftershave that smells like something with a ship on the bottle. <laughs> I keep getting it for Christmas.